growth the operative word to describe UTSA these days. From the opening of new facilities to the move into what most consider a better league, to their football program's quest for a third straight conference title, everything about and around the Roadrunners appears to be getting bigger. To discuss it all, we sat down with the school's vice president of intercollegiate athletics. Well, there's never really an easy time. It really starts ramping up now. It really is. You know, um, it's year round, of course, and always exciting things. But I would much rather have it exciting and busy than the, the other, the opposite. <laughs> UTSA joining the American, knowing it was coming. It's real. Like, here you go, and it's, it's UTSA is part of the American Athletic Conference. We're here. We're, you know, July 1 came, and, um, you know, we're really excited, and, um, but it, it's here, and, and we're ready. To the common fan, they'll say, hey, of course UTSA should make the move. It's a bigger conference. Our athletic programs, especially, you know, football, have been doing really well the last couple of years. It's a natural fit. Well, it may seem seamless to everyone outside of the people who actually have to get it done. On your end, you've got to do all the work in order to make, in, initially, UTSA a member that could meet certain financial requirements for the AAC. Where's the school in that regard in terms of the, the commitment and the need for more in terms of now joining a new conference? Yeah, you know, back in 2021, when, when this became a, a reality for us um, as, as conference realignment was happening, first of all, we had really positioned ourselves. I keep saying it wasn't a matter of when uh, or if, it was a matter of when is conference realignment going to happen. So we put a, a plan together many years ago to position ourselves for this opportunity. Um, when the opportunity presented itself, the university, you know, we talk about athletics moving into the American, it's really the entire university. And a huge shout out and thank you to Dr. Amy, to Veronica Salazar, who's our campus CFO, um, that, that they saw the vision, they saw the trajectory, the momentum, and made commitments um, for athletics to be able to um, join the American. And our work's not over. You know, we, we feel like we've been working really hard the past five years to get to here. I mean, we are not taking our pedal off the, or our foot off the gas, that there's um, more work ahead of us, um, more strategic investment ahead of us. Um, but we're really proud over the last five years, you know, again, thanks to, to those two individuals, we've been able to move our, our budget from about $29 million to 40 million in a short amount of five years with COVID in between all yeah. of that. And so, you know, and a huge thanks to the community who has helped us get that done as well track and field and cross country programs, getting a new home, soccer. Um, that seems to be part of the evolution here in terms of the school taking that next step. Absolutely, you know, that's a facility that when I first got here, um, our student athletes were talking about and it had been something that had been promised to them. And um, so as we started planning race, we had that, um, the Park West facility in mind as well. And unfortunately COVID hit and it, um, you know, put a pause in, in that plan. But as soon as we were in that position to get that moving again, we did. And uh, much deserved for, for those programs, um, like you said, track and field, um, cross country, soccer. Um, they were, they didn't have a locker room out there. You know, they didn't have um, team meeting areas. They didn't have a sports medicine area. So, you know, our priority is to really provide our student athletes with the things that they need to be competitive athletically and academically. And this is just one example. The race facility, Park West, it seems like they're happening. Now, obviously, there's years in between, but it seems like in this preparation and the financing, but it seems like boom, 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 boom. Here, UTSA is growing. Do you kind of have to pump the brakes when people constantly come up and say, well, when's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? And, and I'm talking basketball as well. You know, when people talk about a new basketball facility and, 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 and resources and et cetera, where, where is the school in that regard? Yeah, you know what, like I said, we're not going to take our, our foot off the pedal. We, we, there are, are things that we need to continue to invest in, but it's not going to all happen overnight, right? That there are so many needs. Um, there are a lot of, um, of, thing, of growth opportunities in our department, particularly moving into the American. So we, we've set out a strategic plan, um, our Roadrunner game plan, that's going to help us prioritize those needs. And at the end of the day, it's always going to be about our student athletes. When the Roadrunner fans turn on that TV, and let, let's use football as the example because it's coming up soon, right? And, and, and they're getting ready for a Roadrunner football game or they're anticipating the season, things along those lines. Do you see where there's gonna be a point where the fans are gonna realize 
oh yeah, this is a little bit different. We're in a bigger conference now. This is nicer, this is cooler. Or do you think maybe, is it gonna be a, a situation where it's more gradual in terms of hitting the UTSA fan that, hey, life is different now? Yeah, that's a great question. And I don't know if, if I could answer that. I think it could be different for every sport. I think what's gonna be different for the fans is, is new rivalries, new teams, new logos, new mascots. Um, what's not going to change is how competitive um, our, our aspirations are, and in particular in football. You know, we just heard from the commissioner that he's talking about us, um, you know, being in contention for a conference championship in our first year. So that's definitely not going to change. Coach Trailer getting our, our, our team in a position to be competitive isn't going to change. Um, but there might be, you know, obviously there's going to be some differences in the teams that we're playing. I sat down with uh, Mike Oresco a little while ago, the commissioner of, of the American, and I asked him, I was like, look, they're, they're coming into their first year, but do you already see UTSA as kind of an anchor school? And essentially he answered, yeah. We, we look at them already as a school that can help fulfill, and especially with some recent departures in terms of programs, can help fill that void. To know that the conference looks at your school like that, I would imagine that's a pretty neat feeling all Oh my around. gosh, just brings so much pride to, to our university, to, to the city that, I mean, they recognize what a trajectory, trajectory we're on as an institution and as an athletics program and what we've been able to do in a short amount of time. I mean, again, we talk about we're entering our 13th season of football. We're, we've been competing with, with programs that have had a 100-year history in football. And look at what we've done in a short amount of time. Um, so we're really excited. We're really proud that we're viewed that way. Um, I'm not surprised because of all the work that we've done um, to position ourselves. But again, the work's not over. We need continued um, community support, um, and, and that's going to help us keep moving forward. One of the things that I get asked is, how can this city support UTSA football even more? And one of the things I always ask is, well, have you bought season tickets yet? You know, I mean, yes. have you bought? Are, are, you going <laughs> Thank to, you. are you going to support the other schools? Because when you say the we, you are part of the we. That's right. You know, and so, and so what would be your advice to those fans who are constantly asking, what else can the school do? Well, what can the community do in that regard in terms of making sure that UTSA's ascension yeah. keeps on going? Uh, there's so many, so many ways the community can help individually through business, um, through their business, um, but to your point, you know, buying a season ticket, that creates the momentum for our fan base, right? Um, so buying a season ticket, even if you can't make all six games, we can give that ticket away for you. You can find your friends um, to give that ticket away um, to coming to games. Supporting football is supporting the rest of the department, as we all know. If you're a business, being a sponsor, um, just putting, merely putting a let's go UTSA or let's go 210 banner uh, um, in your business. I mean, showing that pride and showing that community support. Our student athletes feel it, our coaches feel it. People want to be a part of all of that. Dr. Campos, we appreciate your time. Thank you so Thank much. You so Get much. some rest before. <laughs> Well, I was going to say before, it's never ending, right? So it's easy to see the it's start here. of the school year, but we appreciate the time. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate you. Thank you. At UTSA since November of 2017, this is Dr. Lisa Campos' sixth full school year as the head of the Roadrunners Athletic Department.